Coming up on this episode of FYI Guy Live, take an ordinary child's toy and turn it into an extraordinary wreath in just minutes. Upgrade your dated brass fixtures with a fast fix and watch Jeremy turn fence lumber into a family heirloom to treasure. It's all coming up next on FYI Guy Live. FYI Guy Live, I'm the FYI Guy, Jeremy Rabe. Thank you so much for being here. Are you ready for some fun? Yeah! Do we have a lot of crafting experts in the audience? Yeah! I didn't believe you. But get, hey, even if you're not a crafting expert, guess what? You will be by the end of today's show. We have some fantastic projects for you. I cannot wait to share with you. In fact, I want to get started right now because I can't wait. So, let's go to the jar of fun and pick today's fantastic audience member who's gonna help me with today's craft project. It is, let me see, Nicole Brashears. Nicole, where's Nicole? Oh, there you are, Nicole, come on over. Nicole, how are you? Good. Look, how are oh, you? I, I love your orange. Thank you. Thank you. You're gonna match today's project perfectly. Awesome. I did not tell you to wear these bright colors. No. No, no. you did it on your own. Mm -hmm. Now, do you like spring decor and bright colors? I do. You promise? Yes, I wore a bright shirt. I yeah, bright I, I'm so glad you did. <laughs> Ask a stupid question, get an obvious answer. There you go. Okay. Well, today we're going to be making homemade pinwheels Ooh. from scrapbook paper. Now, I love scrapbook. look how fun. Look at the scrapbook book paper I got. Look at all these fun patterns and colors and designs they have. Mm -hmm. Now, the hardest part about this project is picking two that you love because I love all of them. And you know me, I love mixing patterns and colors. So it's very hard to pick the colors that you want because there's so many. So basically you can make the whole book and make all pinwheels out of the whole book because that, that would make me happy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's get started making some pinwheels. Now I've picked paper already because I love, look at how fun that pattern is, and we're gonna mix it with this polka dot, which I love that. Okay, now, take your polka dot one, and you're gonna flip it over. Now, can you get your glue stick, and we're gonna glue stick the back of this polka dot paper. We're actually gonna be gluing, and make sure when you're doing pinwheels, get the corners really good. All right. Okay, corners right like that, perfect. Get the corners really good and tight. And you know what I found? Okay, let's do, let's do something that I actually discovered when I was making these. Do half the sheet first. Just do half of the sheet, like that. Then put your paper right on top of it, just like that, okay? That's okay. That's all right, you're doing great. I just find that it's easier to work with and it doesn't dry as fast when you have the paper down in place. Perfect, how's that going? Oh, I like your nails too. Look at that, okay. Then, I'm so, I got distracted. I'm easily distracted, it's sparkly. Now we've got one side glued down, so then I like to fold back the other side and then glue the other side because I find that these glue sticks dry out really fast, unless you really cake it on. And if you cake it on, then you're wasting glue and then you have to buy more and you know I'm cheap. So, <laughs> that's just, I just don't like wasting money. So there you go, pop that down. How's that look? Is that good? Looks good. Okay, good. Now, I have pre-cut these sheets to 10 inches. You know, scrap of paper is 12 inches. It was just a little bit too big for the wreath we're making. So what I've done is I cut it to 10 to make it good, and now I'm gonna draw a circle right in the center of this, and I find too sometimes it works better if you turn the paper instead of the, see, because sometimes it doesn't work very good. Do you want to do that? Right, I'll try. You yeah. can try that. 
You can either move the compass or the paper. It's up to you. I'll take your advice. I don't want to toot my own horn, but toot toot, that works. <laughs> I mean, great. that just is really good. Okay, now take your scissors. Now, with our glued, we have a circle to make, this is our, our jumping off point, because we're gonna cut down the corners all the way to that little circle we just made. And don't cut in the circle. Okay. Don't cut in the circle. Okay. <laughs> don't do it, okay. All the way down, all four corners, right to that little circle. How you doing? Good. You're I doing good. Didn't cut in the circles. You, <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> You're doing so good. Thanks. So proud of you, Nicole. Have you crafted before? I do scrapbook. You so scrap. I'm familiar with the paper. You, do you have this paper? I don't. I got this paper on clearance, by the way. I just had to. I had to brag just for a second because I, I love when I get a good bargain. Okay. So now that we've got this, you've got your glue gun over there. Yes. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to fold one corner. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue in the center of that circle, right like that. Now I'm gonna fold one corner right down. Now don't burn your fingers, please. Be careful, please. Do you use hot glue gun very often? Uh, yes. Okay, good, so you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know what's funny? I say that and yet I burn my fingers every single time. I really, okay, now skip this one. Okay. Turn it and we're gonna do the opposite. Yes, that's this corner this right one? here. Okay. Yep, put another dab of hot glue. Right down there, and then put it right down in the center. Do you guys see the pinwheel taking shape? Yeah. Isn't that so cute? Okay, and then we can turn it. Alternate every other, every other one, just like that. I love this paper so much. Look how pretty that is. It is, it looks good. It's looking really good. Perfect. Oh, see, now I'll wait to see. We're using, we're using two different techniques for this pinwheel, but both work, and I'm loving what you're doing. She's basically matching the points, and I'm overlapping the points. Oh. The, which is totally, <laughs> okay. it's fine. You did a, you're doing a great job. Now let's finish this off with the last point. Look how, oh my goodness gracious, I love this. Again, I have glue oozing all over my, uh, my pinwheel and it's gonna burn my finger, so I'm gonna move my finger just a little bit. So. Just a little bit, I'm sorry, I'm not, look how pretty hers <laughs> is and mine is not. <laughs> Sorry. Mine is, oh, you're making me look bad on my own show. Oh my goodness, okay. Hold it up, show everybody how pretty this is. Will you see how pretty that is? Yes, guess what? We're not done. You know my motto, more is more. And I went and got all of my cute buttons that I had, I have a ton of extra buttons. We're gonna put a button in the center, but we're not gonna put one button, we're gonna put two buttons. Now, pick a large button, and then pick a contrasting colored small button. Like look at this green and pink, how cute is that? Now we're gonna glue the big button right in the center and I just used way too much hot glue. I will admit that right now. <laughs> and look, I do like it the fact I just poked this button down. The hot glue is seeping through which now provides the hot glue for the second button and I'm just gonna set it right on top of that. And you've got, you, you're already done? Yeah. <laughs> You don't even need me. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> okay, we've got it, and guess what? We're gonna use yours. Now, I may, we made two just in case. Whichever's look, I told my production team, I said, now we'll make, we'll both make pinwheels, but we'll probably use mine because it'll look better. Nope, we're using Nicole's, it looks way better. Yours looks way better, I'm so impressed with you. And I've also made, look at these two cute baby oh. pinwheels. So now, we're going to hot glue. Can you put a little bit of hot glue? Let's see, where do I want this? Can you put a little bit of hot glue right there on the branch? I found these fantastic bright colored grapevine wreaths. Now, if you have the regular brown one, you can spray paint it if you want. But I have a brown one, I have a green one, there's a purple one, and I'm just gonna hot glue that right down there. I am so impressed with your work. Thanks. I got a pro up here, I love that. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna put these just off to the side because I love things in three, you know, they. They always say in design you're supposed to do things in three, in odd numbers, which I actually think is a great technique and it actually works. I'm just gluing these in place for this project. I'm sorry, do you feel left out? No, no. I'm just trying not to let you upstage me I again. I don't wanna, yeah, I don't wanna Because you're so good. <laughs> okay, look at that hot glue did not hold. Let me do it one more time. Perfect, there we go. Just press it down. I tell you what, when I look at this, A, it makes me happy, it makes me ready to plant my garden mm -hmm. because this is so much fun. Let me see if that's held. Are you ready? Look at this. How cute is that? Ooh, I like that. Isn't that fun? 
And you know what the best parts about this project is? The wreath was not expensive, and the paper comes in bulk, so you have extra paper for more projects. You've only used basically six sheets for the pinwheels, extra buttons. It's very affordable, and do you think this would look good at your house? Oh, yeah, definitely. You think so? Oh, yeah. Guess what, Nicole, it's yours. Ooh, there you go. You. That's all yours. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Give her a huge round of applause. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. She's gonna have her own show one day. <laughs> Tell you what. <laughs> hey, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we have a fantastic FYI guy on the fly that's gonna improve the value of your house. Don't go anywhere. If you like everything arts, crafts, home decor, and so much more, then you're going to love Jeremy Rabe's FYI Guy Craft Crush Instructional DVD. Now you can watch the king of crafts create the most amazing artistic creations step by step from start to finish as Jeremy turns his penny-pinching creativity into incredible works of art while he turns trash into artistic treasure. Just one crafting session with Jeremy costs over $50, but with Craft Crush you get 12 complete instructional sessions for just $29.99. But hold on to your glue gun, because if you order right now, you get an instant $10 discount. That's right, you get the Craft Crush Volume 1 directly from FYI guy Jeremy Rave at the low introductory price of only $19.99. On Craft Crush Volume 1, you get 12 personal demonstrations on how to make the vintage suitcase pet bed, the teacup bird feeder, the shabby chic wood plaque, magic melt crayon art, glitter glam candle, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? That's over $500 of one-on-one -on -one instruction with Jeremy for just $19.99. Go to FYIGuy.com right now and get Craft Crush Volume 1 before they're gone. Craft Crush will provide you and your family hours of fun and it makes a great gift. It's the FYI Guy Craft Crush Volume 1. Avoid the rush. Get Craft Crush. Don't delay. Order yours today. Welcome back. Welcome back to FYI Guy Live. Today's FYI Guy on the Fly is a fantastic project to upgrade your home if you just want to live in it or if you're trying to sell. Because how many of you have these old brass fixtures in your home? I mean, these are like the standard builder's grade, what they put in the homes. And I don't know why this was in style, but I know in the 80s it definitely was. And people just don't seem to upgrade it or they feel like they have to spend a lot of money to upgrade their hardware or their uh, light fixtures and in their bathrooms, especially in the kitchens. But you don't have to spend a lot of money. And if you're trying to sell your home, a great thing to buy is spray paint. All you need is spray paint. And let me tell you this, what's really in right now is the oil rubbed bronze finish. Now for a while it was satin nickel and it's chrome, but I tell you, I love this oil rub bronze, and it comes in a variety like Tuscan bronze, Venetian bronze. There's a lot of different kinds you can get. This is just basic oil rub bronze spray paint. This is seriously how easy it is to upgrade. You just take the light off of the wall. It will kill the electricity first. <laughs> Let me start by saying that. Hit the breaker. Do not electrocute yourself. Hit the breaker, take off the light fixture, and this is really easy to come apart. Like, look, these things come off. I mean, these, I, I remember this in my parents' bathroom as a kid growing up. And you're gonna wanna sand it. Sand it with just, this is like a 220 grit sandpaper. It's just really fine. Sand it because you're breaking up the finish of the fixture so the paint will really adhere to it. Now, when you've sanded it, you're gonna spray paint it. And a great way to spray paint, if especially if you're in an enclosed space, is use a cardboard box. What it does is you put it in to the cardboard box and then when you spray all the fumes and, the, and every, all the excess paint doesn't get all over your things because my garage has a layer of spray paint on everything. <laughs> it, it does. You can see every one of my projects on everything in my garage because you can see the colors I've used. So take your spray paint, spray paint your fixture. It's probably gonna take two coats. Do the first coat a little bit light. You don't want the drippies you know, on it. And then when you pull it out, guess what? Look how different that looks. And that is oil rubber on spray paint. That is all it is. And let me tell you, I have done homes. When, I, when I'm decorating homes, they had a bathroom that had a swan neck faucet to the jetted tub. I have redone that with spray paint. The handles to the bathtub in spray paint. The sh shower head in spray paint. And guess what, three years later, 
still looking amazing just from spray paint. And that's today's FYI guy on the fly. What do you think? <laughs> just update it, it's easy. It's, it really, that is a fast, easy, fun project and it will really upgrade your home. I really do swear by that, I love it. And you know what, I think it's time to check my mailbox. I haven't checked the mail today and I'm, like, I'm excited to see what questions we have in store today. You never know what you viewers are gonna send in. Sometimes you shock me. Sometimes not in a good way, but some, most of the time in a good way. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, we have a great question from Judith in Trenton, Tennessee. Oh, I thought I was going to say New Jersey. No, Trenton, Tennessee. Where did you learn all of your craft tips and techniques? Well, let me tell you this. I majored in crafting and home decor <laughs> at the University of Fabric. Anybody, is anybody buying that? And I'm just kidding, no. You know what, to the best of my knowledge, there is no degree in crafting or gluing. I mean, you can learn things in college, of course, for that. I didn't major in that in college. I really am just trial and error. You have to try stuff to see if it works, and hallelujah when it works, and then guess what? For every project you see me make, there's three projects back that didn't work. You know, because you have a great idea, and you think this is gonna be great, and it's gonna work, and then guess what? it doesn't work and it, it's just not what you wanted in your head. So usually I start off with a project and then it turns into this and then I'm like, wait, I could have done this and it turns in and then by over here, there's four other steps behind you never get to see and you will never see that turns into the project. But I'm really happy, you just have to try it. So don't be afraid to try something, get in there, start crafting, see what works, see what doesn't and you'll come up with your own craft techniques and then send me because I want to see pictures of them, so, okay? So send them to me, I want to see them. I could learn from you too, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Judith. Uh, we have Norma in Providence, Rhode Island. How did you get the name FYI Guy? That is a very good question. Does anybody else wonder that? Yeah. Why FYI Guy? Well, let me tell you. I started a little web show a few years ago called FYI Design. Now, the reason I picked that is because I wanted to be informational. FYI stands for For Your Information. And to me, I just don't love crafts. I love home decor, I love gardening, I love planting, anything outside, anything to make your home awesome, from reupholstering a chair to making the art on your wall. So I wanted this show to be all encompassing of informational things, we're learning from each other. So that's why I picked FYI Guy, FYI Guy is because I want us all to learn and have information together. So thank you so much, Norma, for that question. And I hope you're learning something today, I hope so. Thank you, Norma. And Diana in Austin, Texas. Oh, I love Texas. I'm from Texas. Diana from Austin, Texas. Do you have any tips for keeping fresh produce stay fresh longer? Hmm. Okay, okay. This is something good. Who has a garden, a vegetable garden? Anybody have a vegetable garden? Can I tell you, this is the honest goodness truth. Last year in my garden, I had over 70 onions. I love onions, but I cannot eat. 70 onions, and guess what? My friends didn't want them. So what are you gonna do with 70 onions? Here's a great tip to keep onions fresh longer. Who has old pantyhose? No, I'm just kidding, I don't. <laughs> no, I really don't. I had to borrow them, of course. I don't have pantyhose. Or if you don't, just go buy them. Just buy them, but if you have old pantyhose, take your onion, put it down the leg of the pantyhose, and twist it. Take the next onion, put it down the pantyhose, and twist it. Take the next onion, fill up legs of pantyhose, twist them, they will stay good for up to six months in those pantyhose at room temperature. So keep them in your old, don't throw away your old pantyhose, keep your onions fresh, how about that? Wow. I know, it's good. <laughs> also, and again, I grow a huge, huge vegetable garden. I love to give all of my friends the vegetables that I don't need to have a lot of tomatoes and cucumbers. Also, if you wrap it in tin foil and keep it in the crisper drawer as well, that also helps a lot. There's a lot of great techniques to keep it fresh in your fridge as long as you can. I, and again, just grow it, use it, or give it away. Don't waste it. That's what I say. And if it does go bad, put it back in the ground in your garden as compost to keep, it, to keep the garden fresh for the next year. That's exactly what I do. You should see the pile of stuff, the leaves. Also use leaves from your yard. Put that back in and till it back in. It's all about reusing what you have and keeping that compost to keep your garden especially great for the next year. Thank you so much, I appreciate all of your questions. If you have any questions, make sure you go to FYIGuy.com, find me, email me your questions, you could be featured right here on the FYI Guy mail segment. Hey, when we come back, 
We have such a fun project that's going to keep all of your coats and scarves and gloves and keys organized when you walk in the house. It's called the Family Fence. Don't go anywhere. Come back. Hey everyone, you know, I really want to invite you to go like the FYI Guy Facebook page because I'm always updating things every single day and I'm sharing your photos. If you have a great project idea or maybe something you've made, send it to me on the Facebook page and I'll send it out to the world. We'll share it with everybody, we'll like it, we'll comment. It's a great way to keep interactive with your FYI Guy, me. So log on right now, facebook.com slash the FYI Guy. <laughs> hey everyone, sorry. We're just having a little fun with this fence slat right here. Welcome back to FYI Guy Live. I'm Jeremy Rabe, your FYI Guy. In today's project, we're going to be using this fence slat and we're gonna turn it into something really cool and exciting and you can hang in your entryway, but I'm gonna need a special helper from the studio audience. Let's see who we have today. Who's gonna help? Alice Bertoldi. Alice, get on up here. Oh my goodness, Hi. how cute oh. are you? Hey, hey, family show, get your hands off. <laughs> All right. That, I tried. You squeezed a little extra long that time. I'm sorry. You I'm are sorry. so adorable. <laughs> That's okay, you're adorable. So are you. Well, thank, well, thank yes. you, oh yes. my God. You're just so amazing. You are so kind, thank you so oh, much, Alex. Are you excited you. to do a project yes. with me? Yes, now, I'm do, ready. Do you consider yourself crafty? Yes. Do you consider yourself handy? Yes. Do you like to use power tools? Mm, yes. <laughs> We had such a I rhythm know, going. Know, we were like, I yeah, know, yeah, I and know. then you broke it, I Alice. Know. Okay, yes. Okay, okay, do you happen to have, now, we don't have a saw out here on set, but this project requires a saw. Do you like to use saws, or do you have somebody who could help you No, I, I like to use it, because I like to do stuff myself. I, I am with you on that. Yes, yes absolutely, yes. Alice, thank you. Yes. Now, today's project, we're gonna take this fence slat, which is very inexpensive, just a little over a dollar, like I think a dollar yeah. 54-ish, yeah. around there, and I'm gonna cut it, into five pieces, there's one, one piece of wood into five. And you can see I've cut them 12 inches, 13 inches, 14 inches, five, 15 inches, 16 inches. You got that? 12, 12 th yes, 13. 12 through 16. I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't need it. So I've okay. cut the boards. Then I got a second board and I split it right down the middle. Okay, this was the one board and I split, and split it, it because these are gonna be our cross boards coming up. We're gonna connect it, but I'm gonna set those aside first because we need to paint these boards. Now, the fun part about this project, paint it anything that matches your house. Now, what colors are your house? Uh, mine's a off-white. But my barn, <laughs> my, my barn's like this. Okay, so you have a barn. Yeah. So you could use barn wood? Barn wood. Oh, man, I'm yeah. so jealous. Okay, but, but you're saying Old inside, wood. like if you walked into your house, what color would you see? Off-white. <laughs> But if you walk into the barn. But do you, you live in the with? barn? Pretty much. Okay, well as long as you live there, that's fine now, that's okay. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, that's, that's fine with me, I don't judge. It's a I ain't tea judging. room. Oh, it's a tea, it's a tea, can I come over? Yes, oh my. I want you to. What do you think Alice and I just have our own show? <laughs> the way this is, Alice, that's fun. Okay, okay. well let's just say, that's... what if we paint these boards uh, fun, vibrant colors. Okay. We're gonna add color to her off-white, how about that? Because off-white's yeah. a great jumping off point. Yeah. Because that way you can change. Hold that. Yes, you, you know, can. You absolutely. Can change colors. You really can. I do believe in a neutral palette with pops yeah. of color because yeah. the pops of color are easy to, to replace. To, yeah. Okay. We're going to go. paint these fun colors. In fact, let's start off with this one, and we're going to paint it barn red, which is appropriate, For, Alice. Yeah. Okay. I'm just put, look now. Start okay, painting that. Just, yep. Perfect. Go, just okay. like that. Again, I am picking five different colors that I love. And I love mixing lots of colors together. You are amazing. Look oh, how good. Do you need yeah. more paint? Or are you good? No, I think I'm good. Okay, good. Yeah. Now, I like to do this before I attach them to the crossbars because normally, I don't want to get all of our fingers wet. Normally, we have paint the sides. Too. You are fast. There. That is great. On TV. Yeah, she's, that. Did you hear? You We're on TV. Got you got to be fast. <laughs> You're perfect for this project. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I now aim, aim to I'm going to set this down. <laughs> Okay, Alice. <laughs> You're making me lose it, Alice. Okay, okay, okay. Now, let's flip over these boards. Start over there, oh, flip them over. Here are the doing. colors that I picked for this. I call it the family fence, and oh, I'll tell you why in a minute. Cool. Look how fun these Do, Well, Here, let's use this. Thanks. Here, wipe that okay. off. There you go, okay. we have that. Now, here are the colors that I've picked. Now, these are pretty bright, right? 
Yeah. They're a little bit bright. I want to make it look like Alice's barn, where it's worn and aged. So we're going to do a brown wash. We're not going to whitewash. We're going to brown oh. wash. And I have my brown craft paint right here. Now, this is a kind of a, a fun technique that kind of happened by accident. But sometimes the best projects come from accidents. That so I'm putting like brown. <laughs> 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 You have a mic on, you know. <laughs> we can hear you. So, <laughs> oh, I'm blushing. Okay, I am mixing the brown and the the brown paint and the water with the end of the the uh, paintbrush just to get a little brown wash. But here's what we're gonna do. Okay, give me that washcloth that you have. I'm gonna do one, and you're gonna do one. Okay. okay. I don't want this to look so bright, so I'm gonna dip this right into the brown water and I'm going to get it all nice and soaking. I want the whole top of the wood wet, just like this. Oh, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting, getting the red the paint, red. sorry. I'm getting the red paint over okay. here. Get it nice and wet because we're getting water all over this surface. Now, I'm gonna take the brown paint and put the brown paint right on top of it. And you think I'm crazy, but I promise there's a reason. Because we want to get it just like this. Yeah. Now, here's what I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you my three finger method. Take three fingers and pull down. We're going with the grain of the wood okay. and we're pulling down because we're getting that oh, natural worn effect. Yeah. So cool. the brown is staying on, but where our three fingers are, it's picking it back up to reveal the yellow, Looks the cool. mustard color. Okay, do you want to do one? Sure. Okay, let's do that green one then. Okay. Here, get that nice and wet. Now you're going to get your hands messy, is that okay? That's, that's fine. But you have really I'm pretty nice there. hands. That's okay, okay, good. Okay, get it nice and wet, just like that. Is it, listen, have you done this technique before? It's really fun and it really will age. Look how good that mustard yellow looks already, just looks with, the, with the brown on. Okay, okay, now I'm gonna put a little bit of brown paint. Okay, now just wipe it all around first. Perfect. Oh, that's nice. Then, if you want to get your three fingers in the washcloth, and I have so many washcloths that I use for these projects. These are all wooled. Perfect, oh my gosh. You are a pro, Alice! Got it? You did yeah. it! Good. Oh my Good. gosh. Now, for the sake of Tiva, we're gonna keep going. So let's flip these back over because now have you, you've used a drill before then, right? Yes. Okay, yes. here's the fun thing. We're gonna now take our crossbars right like this and we're gonna leave little gaps in it to make it look like it's an old fence and we're just going to put one screw per crossboard just like this and you can eyeball it. Didn't Just like that, it does not, oh my gosh. No. You, from no. your lips to God's ears, no. I tell you what, sometimes the perfection is in the imperfection. Because yeah. if you see something that's too perfect, there's something wrong. Yeah. There's always gotta be some kind of imperfection. Do you wanna do one? Sure. Are you sure? Okay, yeah. there you go. There you go, Alice. Get out of here, that's amazing, you are awesome. <laughs> Alice, hey, I'm really proud of you. I think you, you're an amazing woman, and you. guess what, magic of TV, I have one that's I have one that's made oh. because the, the best part about this project is going to flea markets and thrift stores, yes. finding old handles and hardwares. Look, oh, look at that! Look how cute yeah. that is. Oh, oh I love this. Look one. how Good fun this is. Eat. You put your old handles, your old hardware, anything you want, you put your scarf, oh. your keys, your coat, right there. And the reason I call it a family fence is I actually made a very large version for a client of mine, and it was a huge piece of fence. We hung in the entryway. We hung tons of family photos intermixed with the hardware. Mm -hmm. And now I took a family photo. This is me and my family at Christmas time. And you hang the photo right there at the top. Oh, cool. You can see your whole family when you walk in. You hang their things. Now, do you think you might have a place in your off-white home for this? <gasps> It'll go perfect in my barn, and then when you come down, you can see it. You can hang in your barn. Oh, just as you can. Thank you, thank you. Oh, that's so amazing. I was thinking her house, but she'd. I think I you know, do spend I, more time yeah, in the I barn do. than I you do. do your house. I have to cook. Well, and and again, you don't have to keep my family in there. You can switch it out to your oh. family. But if you want to, I'll sign well, it for you. I can put a picture for you. You can, we'll exchange. I have a feeling she's giving me her number after the show. <laughs> I have a feeling. Well, guess what? You are keeping this. This oh, is going home with you. you. And you, you have to send me pictures of it hanging in your barn. As soon as now, you walk in, you'll yes. see it. And now I'm going to show on the show so you can actually see this hanging awesome. in Alice's barn. Awesome. Give Alice a huge round of applause. Right, Alice. Thank you. Thank you. Stay right here, Alice. Okay. <laughs> I love you so much.
I feel like you're my sidekick, so oh, yeah. I'm going to end the show with you right here. Okay. I want to thank Alice. I want to thank Nicole. Thank you so very much for all the guests, my fantastic studio audience. Again, if you have questions or you want more great tips, tricks, and trends, go to FYIGuy.com. I'm updating the site all the time, and there's so much new stuff. I promise you do not want to miss one thing. Till next time, I'm Jeremy Rabe, your FYI guy, keeping it fast, easy, and fun.